Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to do a recipe that um, a lot of people have emailed me about over the last little while, requesting that I take a look at it. And um, they've sent me links to places where they found it. Now, the, the thing that I found interesting is that over the last six or eight months, this recipe has appeared in a half dozen different food magazines globally. Um, it shows up on all kinds of food blogs, um, shows up on all kinds of websites, all essentially the same recipe, all with essentially the same story and the same ingredient list. And it all traces back to a town in France, a seaside town in France, and everyone's waxing poetic about this cake. I look at the recipe and I look at the ingredients and I say to myself, isn't that just a brownie? There are a couple of things about the method that are slightly different than making a brownie, but the ingredients are essentially what we would call here in North America, Canada, the United States. We would just call it a brownie. So I'm going to start out. I've got uh, some really dark bittersweet chocolate and butter. Some of the recipes specified that you needed to use um, unsalted butter, and some of them specified that you absolutely positively had to make it with salted butter. Another one said that the secret to it is using French butter, which um, would give you a different flavor and texture because the French butter usually, not always, but usually is fermented. Um, the cream is fermented before they turn it into butter, which gives it a different flavor and better tang. And it's also got a higher butter fat content. Um, which brings us to the Canadian dilemma right now. Um, I believe it's called hashtag Buttergate. Uh, Canadian butter isn't melting the same way as it used to. And this has been traced back to uh, feeding the dairy cattle a palm oil supplement, which I don't quite understand. I haven't noticed that Canadian butter, or the butter that I use, just I'm just going to call it butter, is melting differently. I've, it, it's hard to tell because it's happened during winter, and butter is always harder during winter, even at room temperature, because our house is a little bit colder. Um, and I don't know that, uh, that the culprit can really be nailed down because this is also a supplement that's used in other countries and nobody's been complaining about their butter. In any event, I'm going to take this butter and chocolate and we're going to melt it down. Okay, and we are back with some melted chocolate. And I just do it in the microwave now. I stopped that whole uh, over a pot of simmering water thing a long time ago. And I just do it in the microwave. Next step is, uh, is the eggs. And it's interesting, some of the recipes say to separate the eggs and beat the whites separately. Um, beat them to like a stiff or firm peak and then fold them in like you would in any other dessert where you fold in egg whites. Most of the recipes though say to treat them together but that you really need to whip together the sugar, the eggs, and the salt. Um, and some of them add a little bit of coffee, and I'm going to add a little bit of coffee. Not enough coffee that you could actually taste the coffee, but it's just enough coffee to lift the chocolate flavor, to really boost that flavor. So, last egg in. And so we're going to put in the sugar, quite a bit of sugar, salt, and the coffee. That's instant coffee. And start to whisk, and you want to whisk this until the sugar is completely dissolved, as well as the coffee. Okay, so I whipped this into quite the froth. A um, little bit difficult with a hand whisk. If you've got a stand mixer, I would do it with a stand mixer. Now, in goes the flour. And we can just whisk it in. There's not that much flour. Um, there's no water. We're not going to get any sort of gluten buildup at all. And the flour goes in almost immediately, because there's very little of it. And there's also no leavening agent, which is the hallmark of most brownie recipes. At this point, I want to whisk in the chocolate, although I think I'm going to fold it in or stir it in with a spatula instead. Okay, so in goes the chocolate. Got this all mixed together nicely. And I've got a uh, round springform pan prepared, buttered and floured. Now I'm supposed to put the batter in here. Everyone agrees on that. Some recipes tell you to bake it right away in a 350 degree oven. So I've got the oven already hot. 
other recipes swear that the best way to do this is to leave it out on the counter for two hours and then bake it. And apparently this is supposed to allow air bubbles that you've beat in um, into the eggs to come to the surface. And when they come to the surface, it will make the cake denser and it will also give a really nice um, crackly crust on the top. I'm going to go with leave it on the counter for a couple of hours. And I'm going to see if that really is the difference um, that makes this a better brownie than the brownie that we already make. Because the, the ingredients are the same. So. Tastes amazing. It's going to be amazing no matter what happens. So on the counter for two hours, then I'm going to stick it in the oven and bake it. Mm. The thing is, you don't even have to bake it. Hi, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Hi, friends. Uh, what do you make? I don't know. Do a fork? Um, what do I need? I don't know. I don't know. It's... I don't know what it is. Because it's supposed it to be... It looks chocolatey. Fancy. <laughs> but... Um, let's see. Let's see if I can get it off. I think it's... Okay. I think it's hopelessly stuck to the bottom of this pan. Oh, I was it, going to... need a little wax paper? Like, I was uh, going to put some parchment, parchment under it. Thank but you. But everybody just said um, butter oh, and... Oh, no. Oh. I think the issue was just the lip there. The lip? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, a fork. fork. <laughs> now, it has a fancy French name. Okay. Um, and everybody waxes poetic about it. I have a very distinct thought on what this is going to be. Okay, so just looking at it, it's very moist. Mm -hmm. Like it's glisteningly moist. Like it's like, like a it's, yeah. fudgy, glisteningly moist. Mm-hmm. Does it not have much flour in it? No. Yeah, that would explain the, the texture. So yeah, so it's that, that fudgy, chocolatey, brownie, cakey. It's a brownie. It's a really super moist brownie. It's not a chewy brownie. It does remind me of flourless cakes. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's got that, it doesn't have that chewy texture of, of, of yeah. a flour-based. I mean, there's uh, a, It's not stopping me from having another bite, though. There's a cup of butter. And mm. there's only a quarter cup of flour. And like what? A, well, there's four ten eggs. Ten ounces of oh, four eggs. Four and eggs. Like um, 200 grams of, of, of chocolate. Mm. It's good, though. It is really good. It's got a, lo it's got yeah. a lovely flavor. It is, I'm, I'm in. Um, uh, clearly, I'm. There's no vanilla. And there's a tiny little bit of coffee which you're not getting because it's just lifting the chocolate. And coffee and chocolate do go yeah. well together. And I find it often can, you don't notice it. You don't notice it at all. But if it wasn't there, you wouldn't notice the chocolate flavor would be as pronounced. That's really good. Okay, so as much as I, you know, downplayed it at the beginning because it's just a brownie, it's probably one of the best brownies I've ever had. It is really good. Yeah, yeah. it is really good. <laughs> I'd say this is a keeper. I'd say this is a winner. And if you don't want to feel special, just do it in a square pan. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> See you again soon.